notice that all the blue colors are being gathered to mimic the blue in the middle. This is one of the most important and the most impressive features in the new update of Resolve period. So, Resolve introduced a new spider web into the uh, color page. Uh, it controls the colors and uh, if you control a point, it changes the colors in one way or another. However, what does it really do? Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplify.com and today we're going to be simplifying the color warp effect, the, the uh, spider web effect for the absolute beginner. Let's start. To get to the new color warper, simply click on this icon here. Note that the color warper effect has two different modes. You can switch between the modes by clicking these icons here. The first is the hue saturation mode, which is open by default. However, if I click here, I open the chroma luma mode. And note that each panel is divided into two different sections, the visual control section and the buttons control section. Let's start with the hue saturation panel. Even though this looks a bit scary, this is actually Actually just a normal color wheel. The colors are laid out the same way as a normal color wheel. For example, you have red to the top left and all the rest of the colors are laid out the same way. Let's zoom in. Each point here represents a color. So this point represents this particular color which happens to be a certain shade of red. So if I hold this point and I move it around, I'm simply telling Resolve to replace one color with another color. In this case, we replaced this red so all the objects that used to be this particular red just turned into this particular shade of blue. So if you zoom out, all the red objects like her skin tone for example just became blue because we told Resolve to select red and turn it into blue. It's as simple as that. It's just a new way of controlling the same color wheels. What makes this great is that there are many ways to control these points. First, using the monitor. So while this panel is open, if I hover the mouse over an object in the screen and click, notice that Resolve selected the correct point that corresponds with the color I clicked. The selected point is orange now, so now I can click and move it around knowing that it corresponds to the part of the image I originally clicked on. Let's reset. But what's even better is that if I click on an object on the screen and keep on holding the mouse button down, now I can control the colors right from the monitor. Notice how the image to the bottom is moving and the point will move in the same direction I move the mouse in. This essentially created a virtual color wheel where I clicked. So this is how we control hue. How do we control saturation? Let's zoom into the color wheel. It's important to note that the point in the middle represents no saturation. So by selecting a point and getting it closer to the center of the representation here, I reduce saturation. And if I move a point further away from the center of the representation, the more saturated this color becomes. Let's zoom out and reset. So for example, I'll click on her dress here and notice at the bottom that a particular point was selected. Now, in order to reduce the saturation of blue or this particular shade of blue that was selected, I can move the controller to the left closer to the center of the image in order to reduce saturation. And I can move it further to the right, increasing the saturation of the same color of blue. And of course, if I move the mouse up or down, I can change the hue or the color of her dress. Let's zoom in again and reset. Now, this is very important to understand because you cannot control saturation by simply moving the mouse in a particular direction. For example, in order to desaturate the color blue, I need to move the mouse to the left. However, to desaturate green, I need to move the mouse or the controller to the upper right closer to the center point and to desaturate red, I need to move the mouse in this direction. That's very important to understand. The next way to control the points is by simply clicking on a particular point and moving it around. For example, I know that this is yellow and this is green, so I can switch all the yellow objects to become green by simply clicking here and dragging this controller to green. And notice this part of the image. When the controller was in this direction, this was very yellowish. And now when I moved all the yellows to become more green, I just changed the colors to green. Note that I can control and select multiple points at once. So I can drag and select these points and move them around as one point. This will become very handy to understand later. Finally, if I select a point, whether by clicking on the point itself or clicking on an object to select the point, while the point is being selected, so I have this point selected now, now I have extra controllers to the right that control this particular point. First we have hue, 
that will control the hue of the color selected by this point. Then we have saturation, which as you guessed, will control the saturation of the color selected by this point. And finally, we have luma, which control the brightness of the color selected by this point. Note that the luminance control does not have a representation on the web view here. Let's reset. And finally, through these controllers to the bottom here, I can change how many points are overlaid on top of the color wheel for more precise controls. So now we have six, I can change it to 24. And now we have more points, allowing us for more precise color controls. And to the right here, we have many controls, with one of the most important being the pin controller. It allows you to pin certain points in their place and prevent them from moving around. Let's take a look at an example. If I control this point and move it around, while controlling it, I also control some of the points around it. But what if I want to control this particular point only? Let's reset. I'll click the pin icon to activate it, and then I'll pin some of the points around it. Notice that when I pin the points, their colors change, they become a bit darker. And now I'll select the normal controller again. And when I move this point, note that I'm now moving this particular point without affecting any of the points around it. Let's take a look at an example of when this might be very important. Let's take a look at this scene here and note that we have this red sign to the right. I'll click on this sign and note that it corresponds to this particular point. Now I'll move this point around and notice that while changing the color of the sign, I'm also affecting the color of this building around it. Notice that the building also just became green because I'm controlling many points around it. Let's reset. I'll click on the sign again to make a selection. And now I need to control this point only without affecting any of the points around it. So I'll simply click the pin icon and I'll pin all the points next to it. Go back to the main controller and note that now I can change the color of the sign. Take a look at the sign's color, how it's changed. Changing, I can change it even to blue without affecting the color of the building around it. This is extremely important. Another very really important controller is the pull points controller. To understand what it does, we have to see it in action. So I'll simply click it and notice what will happen to the points here once I start clicking. The points are being gathered into the point I clicked, but why is that important? Why did I want to gather all the points into a single point here? Well, this is one of the most important and the most impressive features in the new update of Resolve period, because it allows you to achieve color uniformity in a much easier way. To understand understand what it's doing, let's take a look at this image now. There's a color chart in the image. Now notice that we have this particular blue and this blue and this blue here. These are three different shades of blue. However, what if I wanted to unify the blue color in my image for a more pleasing look? So I'm going to try not to have like 20 different shades of blue or red or any other color in the image. And I just wanted to unify the colors, reducing the number of colors in the image. Well, with the new version of Resolve, that's extremely easy. Note that I have this button selected and now in the monitor, if I click on blue, notice that all the blue colors are being gathered to mimic the blue in the middle. Take a look at the original image and the new one. Notice how we made the blue parts of the image much closer to each other in color. So this is before and after. Let's reset. And this can even be more effective if we increased the number of points. And now if I try to gather blue now, I'm actually gathering more colors into the same scheme. So now we just told Resolve to take all the blue colors and try to unify them into one particular shade of blue. And you can see this here. So this is the image before and after before and after. So we can reduce the number of colors streamlining the color palette in the image. Once you try this, you'll discover that it's extremely effective. Let's reset and let's switch now to the chroma luma panel. Look at there, I'll simply click this button and this is the new panel. Note that this panel is divided into two sections. So we have the section to the left and the section to the right. For example, the panel to the left allows us to switch the colors of a particular point only between blue to the right and yellow to the left. So I can switch the colors only between blue and yellow. And the panel to the right allows us to switch the colors of a particular point between magenta and green. And the controllers to the right can control one panel at a time. And I can use this controller to the top to switch between the panels. So while grid one is selected, these points here will only control the panels to the left. And if I click grid two, now these points will control the panel to the right. Controlling the points here is done using the same exact way that we saw in the previous panel, including pinning the point and controlling the points through the monitor. Let's reset. So in this panel, for example, I can select all the blue colors in the image. And 
and make them yellow, or the other way around. Let's reset. But what if I move a point vertically? One of the unique things about this panel is that it allows us to control the brightness of certain colors in the image. If we look at blue for example, the blue points to the top control the light blue color, and the ones at the bottom control the darker blue parts. This allows me to change the exposure. For example, let's make the yellow less bright. So I just reduce the brightness of the yellow parts in the image. But how do I control saturation? Let's reset. This line in the middle represents less saturation. So for example, if I select a point and pull it towards the middle, now I just reduce the saturation. So now we desaturated yellow because this line in the middle represents saturation. So as always, if you joined uh, our color grading course at any time in the past, uh, you will be upgraded for free uh, for the new uh, Resolve 17 color grading course. And if you like this, please visit us at filmsimplified.com uh, where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through each tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com